morning. I have uh, recently been attending uh, uh, some Bible studies at this church that a friend of mine, God bless him, Eric, told me about. And it's been uh, just a blessing. Uh, the pastors there and the congregation are just wonderful Christians. And I'm thankful to God that I've been going there. We do need the assembly, that's for sure. So, um, you know, uh, they were talking about how receiving the gift, a free gift with open palms and the Lordship salvation. And I'd like to, uh, you know, contribute or uh, share my understanding of uh, this. Um, while surrendering needs to be actualized every day, every subsequent surrender is simply the living out of the initial total surrender that occurs, that occurs at true conversion. Maybe some at the time, the time of receiving Christ have not had this fully explained to them, which is somewhat of a shame, but the reality of the coast only dawns on them after they have been lured into the door. This will possibly seem like a bait and switch has occurred and given the nature of modern evangelism, they may be right. However, when one has been told from the beginning that following Jesus involves total and permanent denial of self, the bearing of a cross and faithful following of Christ, the daily discoveries of sacrifices to be made in progress of continuing in the faith should not stumble them. The faith that saves is childlike, but the life lived by that faith requires maturing. A child receives life as a gift at birth and continues to receive every breath as a gift for the remainder of its life. The beggar's opening of the fingers or the hand, the palms, to receive divine life moment by moment is a continual posture. As an example, in Psalm 143 verse 6, and make a point of that and read it for yourself afterwards. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsts after thee as a thirsty land, Selah. As our life uh, goes on and matures, so does uh, our behavior conform more to that of Christ. Yes, this change does not come by human works, but the works come by it. This is an inward transformation from glory to glory into his image, worked in us, by the Spirit of God. What must, be, what must we do? Fix our gaze upon the glory of the Lord in Christ. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, which I believe they will be studying in the following weeks, it says in 2 Corinthians 3.18, But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass of glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Same chapter, 2 Corinthians, same book, 2 Corinthians 4, 6. It says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Same chapter, 2 Corinthians 4, 17. For our light affliction, which is but up for a moment, worketh for us as far more exceeding an eternal way, weight of glory. The following verse, 418. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. How much work is that? See, a person does not become a Christian by living out his or her commitment to the Lordship of Christ, but by making that commitment in the first place. 
you see, that commitment that begins the life and it generates it. If conversion is genuine, it will be lived out. Philippians 2.12, it says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in, the, in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's what Paul says. In the next verse, Philippians 2.13, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. See, the disciples' love for God makes any obedience joyful. And it's not burdensome. It's not a burden for them. In 1 John 5, 3, 1 John 5, 3, it says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Are there battles to fight? Yes, but these involve further trust and resting in the power and the victory of Christ as well as continue, continuing to stretch out the palm to receive God's strength. The beggar at the beautiful gate received his healing as a gift and the newfound uh, health provided the strength for him to walk and leap and praise. Uh, in Acts, and that's in Acts uh, 3, it says, Now Peter and John, 3.1, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, and uh, the ninth hour, in Acts 3, 2, I'm going to read all the way through to 8, verse 8, Acts 3, from 1 to 8. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, that is called Beautiful Gate, to ask alms for them entering the temple. He was asking for donations or money. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him. As John did, said, look at us. And he, he fixed his attention on them, expecting, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. But he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood up and began to walk and enter the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. See, the walking and, and, and leaping and praising God were actions that the former beggar did of his own volition. Though, though, the choice to do so would seem to have been rather natural to him in his healed state. It was impossible for him to do it before. But in his natural healed state, he was able to because the power by which he did these actions was the power provided to him by God in that healing. Do Christians suffer defeats? Yes. In some battles, absolutely. Even sometimes some fall away, unfortunately. Of course. But as I understand it, this is because they're having closed their palm and began to act independently of the power of God and the power and the gift of God. They close their hands. Amen. So... That's my understanding of um, the open palm and the Lordship salvation. Thank you. God bless.